Monalee. I am Monalee. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the second episode of Meaning Behind the Music. And so this came from Patreon. I had everyone there um, kind of weigh in on what song I was going to do for this one. And um, it is a mainstream song and it's another one from The Southern Blues. But... And you may think you know the story behind it, because even my mom was like, I, yeah, every, like if you're from the 70s, everyone knows the story behind the song, but, but, I dig deep. So, sorry, 14-year-old boy brain there. Uh, and I find really cool facts about it and stuff you probably don't know. So the song that was chosen was Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. <laughs> In case you didn't know. <laughs> I got my notes here because I want to make sure I cover everything. Okay. So, Smoke on the Water, Deep Purple. It's their most famous song. And it came out in 1972. And it was for this album. It's called Machine Head. And uh, everyone knows it. It's immediately recognizable because of that riff that I just did. Even if you don't know that that was Smoke on the Water, you don't know that's Deep Purple. Everyone has heard that, you know it, especially if you are any kind of rock person. And it's probably one of the most, I would say it's in the top five most iconic uh, riffs like in the history of rock. And um, so the song, as we know, as most people know anyway, it took its inspiration from a fire in the casino at Montreux, Montreux, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, in Switzerland. And that was on December 4th, 1971. So the band was going to start recording their Machine Head album uh, there right after a Frank Zappa concert. But someone fired a flare gun at the ceiling during Zappa's show, which set the place on fire. That's insane. Can you imagine like being at a concert and someone shoots off a flare gun at the ceiling and then the whole thing just catches on flames? That's crazy. So Deep Purple was actually in the audience for the show, and lead singer uh, Ian Gillen recalls two flares being shot by someone sitting behind him that landed in the top corner of the building and quickly set the place on fire. Zappa stopped the show, and he helped ensure an orderly exit. Can you imagine that? Zappa just stops the show, and he's like, your exits are here and here. They might be behind you. Like, that'd be crazy. So, Deep Purple watch the blaze from a nearby restaurant once they got out. They just see this place on fire. And when the fire died down, a layer of smoke had covered Lake Geneva, which the casino overlooked. You see where I'm going with this? The image gave bass player Roger Glover the idea for the song title, Smoke on the Water. And Gillen wrote the lyric about their saga, uh, recording the Machine Head album. So who wrote the lyrics for that? So the band was relocated to the Grand Hotel in Montreux where they recorded the album using the Rolling Stones, ah, the Rolling Stones mobile out studio. Just how all this kind of Zappa and the Deep Purple and the Rolling Stones, oh my gosh. They needed one more song, so they put together Smoke on the Water using Gillen's lyrics and the riff that guitarist Richie Blackmore came up with. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna keep doing that every time they say riff. It's like I'm hip hypnotized to do that. And so the result was a song telling the story of these strange events just days after they happened. Isn't that crazy? So like when they wrote this song and then recorded it, it was literally days after it happened. It wasn't like they're reminiscing years later or something like that. So the recording sh sessions took place from December 6th through the 21st. And so we're going to get to some really cool stuff about this song as well. So in a Song Facts interview with Gillen, he explained, quote, we set the gear up in the hallways and the corridors of the hotel and the Rolling Stones mobile truck was out back with very long cables coming up through the windows. We tried to recreate an atmosphere in a technical sense the best we could. And when we went to write the lyrics because we were short on material, we thought it was an add-on track and it was just a last minute panic. <laughs> what? It's like their most famous song and that was just an afterthought. Kind of like when we talked about Led Zeppelin before with Immigrant Song and that was supposed to be comical and now it's like, that's their song. Um, so anyway, the riff and back and backing track had been recorded on the first day as a kind of a sound check. 
my God, this is just crazy to me. And there were no lyrics. They were just playing that riff and, you know, letting it, letting it go. And the engineer, he says, the engineer told them on the last day, quote, man, we're several minutes short of an album. So they said they dug it out and Roger and Gillen wrote a biographical account of the making of the record. We all came out to mantra, you know, the lyrics, like that's where that's coming from. So the session where they put down the backing track took place at a dance club in Montreux called the Pavilion, where they tried to record after the casino burned down. So the smoke on the water track was all they accomplished there because locals complained about the noise and police shut them down. <laughs> the rest of the album and the smoke on the water vocal was recorded at the Grand Hotel. Can you believe that? All that getting shut down for what they thought was just going to be an add-on track because they needed more time. Turns out to be like one of the most iconic rock songs ever. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Frank Zappa, who was mentioned in the lyrics, as y'all know, lost all his equipment in the fire. Everything. Burn. He then broke his leg a few days later when a fan pulled him into the crowd at a show in England. This prompted Ian Gillen to say, break a leg, Frank, into the microphone after recording this for a BBC special in 1972. Look that up, listen to it, and you'll hear him say break a leg, right? So deep purple bass player Roger Glover had some doubts about the title. So he knew it was great, Smoke on the Water, but he was reluctant to use it because it sounded like a drug song. And believe it or not, in the 70s, it's crazy, but Deep Purple was not on the drug bandwagon. That's not to say they didn't like smoke a little bit or something like that, but I'm talking they were not on the drug Ozzy Osbourne Highway to Hell kind of thing. I know Highway to Hell is, is ACDC, but you know what I mean. So the band did not think that this would be a hit, and so they rarely played it live. And when they did, though, obviously, huge reaction from the crowd. They included a live version from a show in Osaka on their 1972 live album Made in Japan, which was a huge seller. So people loved hearing this live. The album was released in America in April of 73, over a year after Machine Head was released there. So this earned the song a lot more exposure and it convinced Deep Purple's people to release it as a single in America in May. So the song didn't peak at number four in the US until July 28th, 1973. So by this time, Deep Purple had another album out, uh, Who Do We Think We Are? And the um, lineup that recorded the song had broken apart with Ian Gillen and Robert Glover leaving the band. So we're gonna continue with some fun facts now, and that is um, Funky Claude, as the lyrics, Funky Claude was running in and out, pulling kids out the ground is Claude Nobbs, and he's a man who helped rescue some people in the fire and found another hotel for the band to stay. He's the co-founder of the prestigious Montreux Jazz Festival. So that's why they sing about him in the song. Nobbs explained to Gibson.com how this song arose out of the ashes. He says, quote, Deep Purple were watching the whole fire from their hotel window, and they said, oh my God, look what happened. Poor Claude, and there's no casino anymore. They were supposed to do a live gig at the casino and record the new album there. Finally, I found a place in a little abandoned hotel next to my house and we made a temporary studio for them. Oh my gosh. One day they were coming up for dinner at my house and they said, Claude, we did a little surprise for you, but it's not gonna be on the album. It's a tune called Smoke on the Water. <laughs> this just kills me. I just, I'm dying, I love it. So, he, so Claude says he listened to it and he said, you're crazy, it's gonna be huge. Now there's no guitar player in the world who doesn't know, and he hums the riff here because I watched the interview. And they said, oh, if you believe, so we'll put it on the album. So because he said this is going to be huge, they were like, if you think so, we'll go ahead and just add it on there. So it's actually the very precise description of the fire in the casino of Frank Zappa getting the kids out of the casino, and every detail in the song is true. None of it's made up. It's what really happened. In the middle of the song, it says, Funky Claude was getting people out of the building. And he says, actually, when I meet a lot of rock musicians, they still say, oh, here comes Funky Claude. <laughs> this is, uh, I love this. I love this. This is stuff I live for. It's what I live for in radio interviewing people and hearing all this stuff. In the last verse, Ian Gillen sings about recording the song in the Grand Hotel, quote, with a few red lights and a few old beds. 
he told song facts what that means so what it means is it was too bright in the hotel so they put in red bulbs to solve the lighting issue the acoustics were another problem so they improvised sound soap by using mattresses as sound baffles unbelievable this makes me want to go back and listen to the song every second and just scrutinize it the B side of the single was another version of the song recorded live in Japan, and everyone seems to love that version live, even better than just the recorded version. In 1989, former members Richie Blackmore and Ian Gillen released a new version of this with, huh? Robert Plant, uh, of, of course, Led Zeppelin, Brian May, and Bruce Dickinson. So they called the project Rock Aid Armenia, and those proceeds went to the victims of the Armenian earthquake. Fender.com asked Richie Blackmore how he came up with the song's famous riff. I have to do it every time. He replied, Ian, the deep purple drummer, and I often used to jam just the two of us. It was a natural riff to play at the time. It was the first thing that came into my head during the jam. You know you're talented when something like that just pops into your head. Like right now, okay, I say I'm like this, I'm a singer, right? I'm not that talented. Here's what I come up with right now. La 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 la. <laughs> that's it, right? Like that's, I'm not coming up with. <laughs> so Deep Purple went through a number of lineup changes, but Smoke on the Water stayed in their set list because it was too popular not to play. People are going to be chanting it. After lead singer Ian Gillen left in 1973, David Coverdale got to sing it. Tommy Bolin was tasked with playing it on guitar when he took over for Blackmore in 75. And then they kind of went through all these um, just different people coming in and out of the band. But they still have to play it because that's what people want to hear. And they're chanting it at their concerts. So the famous guitar riff is performed in ah school of rock right we talked about this in the last one with immigrant song that jack black like begged to play this this one i don't think he had to beg i think he just asked and they said okay but another classic one on that movie on june 3rd 2007 in kansas city kansas 1700 guitarists gathered to play this song together and break the record for most guitars playing at one time the entire song was played, though only the one lead guitar played the solo. Guitarists from as far as Scotland came out for this event. The event was organized by um, radio station KYYS. How cool is that to hear over 1,700 guitars? <laughs> so um, it's hard to compete with outsourcing, however. And the record was beaten on October 26, 2007, when 1,730 Guitarists gathered in India to perform knock, knock, knock it on heaven's door. Hey, 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 hey. Y'all are just getting all kinds of monolay tonight. Okay, so I have a couple more facts I want to say. I know this video is getting kind of long, but it's just really cool about this song. So, uh, this, it's been using commercials such as Dodge. We all heard it in the Dodge commercials, if you remember. So, according to an interview with Ian Gillen on VH1's classic albums, uh, Machine Head, the band did not have much money when recording this album and were renting a recording studio. They stayed past when they were supposed to get out. As they were recording this song, the police were knocking on the door to kick them out. While they're recording this song, it does not get much more rock, roll, rock and roll than that, folks. So in 2008, the survey of students from music schools across London, this topped the poll as the best ever guitar riff best ever they said this is it nirvana smells like teen spirit came in second and then third was walk this way that sounded more like hella good but no doubt walk this way talk this way well, anyway you know so according to the London Times newspaper, Richie Blackmore was embarrassed to present this song to his fellow members of Deep Purple because it was such a Neanderthal tune for a guitarist of his caliber to come up with, is what he thought. What? Ah. The lyrics, Swiss time was running out, meant that their visas were going to expire soon. They wrote the songs and recorded them in a matter of weeks. A couple weeks. I'm just baffled. So another thing that the band wants to point out is that many beginners uh, try to play this song when they pick up a guitar. It's one, it's like one of the number one things that a beginner guitar player wants to play. And they usually play it wrong. So here's how. Use the open G and D strings as the starting point and you pluck the strings with each finger, 
not a pick. Lots of people play this from the fifth fret of the A and D string, which is wrong. And that's quotes from Ricky, Richie Blackmore. Last thing I want to say is talking about the song's merits as live material, Roger Glover said in Metal Hammer, quote, I think Smoke on the Water is the biggest song that Deep Purple will ever have, and there's always a pressure to play it. And it's not the greatest live song. It's a good song, but you sort of plod through it. The excitement comes from the audience, and there's always the apprehension that Richie Blackmore isn't going to want to do it because he's probably fed up with doing it. But you know what? We have recordings, we have live recordings, and I'm excited because anytime I want to get pumped up with some classic rock, I guarantee the first one I'm going to is... There's another meaning behind the music with Music with Monolith. Cheers.